when most people think of ecology, they think of the big woods behind me, the forest that naturally developed through successional stages. Some even think of the prairies and the fields. But not too many people think of applied ecology, like my garden, farming, gardening, forestry. These are all fields of applied ecology. And a person who uses ecological principles can reduce their work and have a healthier garden or farm. If we look at the bare ground, we see it's not bare after all. There are a lot of weeds emerging and I keep killing them. And some of these weeds are really abundant. And if I let this go for very long, in a few weeks, if we have rain, this bare soil will be covered with pure green. But you can use some of your ecological knowledge to reduce this work. So here's what this crazy ecologist did. This field that I use for my garden is dominated by a relatively high successional stage. Most of the plants that you see are perennials. They come up every year. They are deep rooted. They compete heavily and successfully for the little moisture that is here. And the site is dominated by prairie blue stem, Andropogon tenere, which is a rhizomatous sod forming grass that will suck all the water from anything that I might plant into it. This site is where a disc hit it and disturbed it last year and so look at the profusion of flowers on these invading annuals in this little area. But most of it is this. And so I didn't want to disc it and destroy the site but I wanted to move pumpkins to another patch so I could have a garden of just dominated by pumpkins and whatever else happened it wouldn't matter. So here's what I did. I mowed the grass. I mowed the perennials. And then I sprayed them with a grass killer. Well, I didn't... Hold on, it's coming. <laughs> okay, I didn't use a high rate. I used a low rate. I sprayed it a couple of times and I waited to make sure it took. And what it did is it suppressed the rhizomatous grass and other things temporarily. And I knew that it would be temporary. And my plan was to rip through this sod trenches fill them with the compost and plant them to mounds of pumpkins. I got big pumpkins, little pumpkins, decorative pumpkins, mini pumpkins, giant pumpkins, eating pumpkins, pumpkin pumpkins, and more. And then any other seeds I had I also added to the trench. So there's corn. The corn can get up and stay high and be above the pumpkins. The pumpkins will take off and when they really start to take off, uh-oh, bad guys, bugs. When they really start to take off, then the shade from their leaves will suppress the grass. And I won't have to mow this site. I won't have to hoe this site. And I'll have a nice pumpkin patch without tearing up the sod, which takes an awful lot of energy. And if you're a farmer, costs a lot of diesel fuel. So, oh, I got some beans and corn coming up in this row. We'll see what happens. But that's applied ecology.
You may have noticed that I have bluebird houses located all around the garden. And I get bluebirds every year in abundance and robins and swallows. And I use these birds, well they help me because they're my friends after all. I use these birds to uh, control the insects. I don't use insecticide unless I absolutely have Let's take another look underneath our timber at some things that people don't understand well. And that's the structural aspect of the understory and certain relationships that are ecological that might have to do with too many deer or fire or any other disturbance and in some parts of the United States particularly the southeast with cattle grazing in the woods forest rangeland it's called but you know what it's cattle grazing in the woods when you lock cows into the woods by putting barbed wire around it and stop the natural rotation of grazing, which means animals move from range they hit hard and then get off and move to a new range, maybe that's been burned, then what happens is this. The grazing animals can eliminate the perennial broadleaf shrubs and forbs that produce food that keep some wildlife, and particularly birds, quail, in the southeast alive over the winter and we replace it by default by simply burning and simply grazing heavily with cattle or even with too many deer we replace it with look wire grass very poor quality grass it isn't very nutritious at all and it looks pretty though like a campsite nice campsite right but there's no food here for deer. There's no food here for deer for the winter except for these browse plants that have been eliminated. So we have to protect the range one way or another to eliminate the browse. One of the ways to see the impact of grazing, and grazing always hits the youngest, newest plants first, right? So it keeps new plants from growing in this area. So one of the ways an ecologist might study this is to build an exclosure. Take wire that will exclude the animals you're interested in, in this case would be deer, and build a cage, a lots of cages for replication in our study, so that deer can't graze and watch what happens. And what will happen is that in a very short amount of time, in a couple of years, inside the cage will look like this with briars and emerging perennials, young trees, and shrubs, because it is overgrazing that keeps that out. 